So our first problem for our discussion is this one. It is about Arius Company with which ang mga tanong po ay 17 to 21, ano? You have current tax expense for 2018, deferred tax liability for 2018, income tax expense for 2020, and then 20... Item number 20 is for 2019 na income tax expense, and then income tax expense ng 2020 sa item number 21. This is rather a simple problem, guys, wherein ibibigay na sa'yo ano ang income tax, or ano ang accounting income, I mean, and ano yung taxable income. This is a standard problem which you might have already encountered if you have been studying the topic. But let us just be clear with how to solve this. Number 17, you are being asked your current tax expense. And if you have been listening close with our previous discussion, alam mo po na ang current tax expense, it is simply computed by multiplying the tax rate with the taxable income. And since given na po yung taxable income sa 2018, and the tax rate as well is already present, we can just do a simple math of multiplying 3 million, the, the taxable income of 2018, by the tax rate of 30% or 0 0.3. On my calcu, the answer would be 900,000, suggested answer, letter C. In number 18, the requirement is deferred tax liability. So to explain, how does deferred tax liability arise? Again, your very first hint on ascertaining whether my deferred tax liability is kung tinatanong siya. And in the options, walang zero. Well, unironically though, this is quite useful. Alam mo na ngayon na ang problem na to may deferred tax liab. Ano ang source ng deferred tax liab? Dapat meron kang future taxable amount. That future taxable amount will always result to a liability and addition to an expense. That is your Q. Sir, what is future taxable amount? Your future taxable amount is something that results out of the difference of accounting income and taxable income. And it is when your accounting income is greater than taxable income when future taxable amount arises. And in our 2018 data, nagpapakita po na mas, mat, mas malaki yung accounting income na 4 million kesa sa taxable income natin na 3 million. So let me just bring up Excel to further illustrate this one. Meron tayong tax rate na 30% and accounting income taxable income for the different years. So we will now have to compute the differences between accounting income and taxable income. And this could be deferred tax uh, liability, if positive, or asset, if negative. Paano magkakaroon ng deferred, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry. This is not deferred tax liab or deferred tax asset. This is future tax taxable amount or future deductible amount. Future taxable amount if positive and future deductible amount if negative. Sorry about that. Let me just go ahead and compute this. Dito po. Copy the formulas. And there we have it. During the year of 2018, accounting income was higher than taxable income. And that resulted to a positive amount of 1 million. Ano ibig sabihin ng 1 million na yan? That is a future taxable amount. Meron kang income na na-recognize sa accounting pero hindi pa taxable. Okay, keep that in mind. In 2018, you recorded an income na hindi pa naging taxable in that year. 
This results to a 1 million future taxable amount. Future taxable. Ano ba ibig sabihin, sir, kapag, kapag future taxable amount? This is what you should understand for a future taxable amount. Hindi siya na-recognize in taxation during the year because it will be recognized in future periods. Precisely in 2019 and 2020, your taxable income was greater than your financial income. And the amount of difference was equal to 500,000 for 2019 and another 500,000 in 2020 na naging greater po ang taxable kaysa sa accounting. Kumbaga, in these years, na-reverse yung amount from 2018. It is termed future taxable amount kasi sa future pa siya masasama sa taxable income. And this is now the time that 2019 and 2020 is what future is pertaining to. During 2018, my future taxable ka. When is the future? 2019 and 2020. Na reverse lang ang difference. Okay? You have a future taxable amount and it was duly taxed in 2019 and 2020. Because of this, because you have a future taxable amount, you will have to recognize a deferred tax liability. How so? Well, you simply multiply your future taxable amount with the tax rate then you get a deferred tax liability but if we would continue the illustration this is what will follow ano in 2019 meron kang negative 500,000 you might think that is a future deductible amount guys pero in reality this 500,000 na negative kapag i-multiply ko siya with the same 30%, ano ang magiging result natin? It is going to be equal to one fifty. What is one fifty? Guys, your one fifty is what we term as decrease in deferred tax liab. Sir, di ba negative? Dapat future deductible amount yan, tapos yung future deductible amount dapat nag arise sa deferred tax asset. Diba sir? Well, you are right in thinking that. Pero guys, you will not recognize deferred tax asset until such time na ma-zero out na po yung deferred tax liab natin. Okay? So what you are going to do here guys is meron tayong beginning na deferred tax liab na 300,000. Pagka 2020 nagkaroon tayo ng decrease in deferred taxes. What will happen in that scenario is that you will recognize this decrease and apply it as a reduction in your deferred tax liability. And then in the following year of 2020 as well, imumultiply natin ulit yung negative 500,000 to the tax rate because this now will result to a full reversal of your deferred tax liab such that at the end of the year, yung deferred tax liab natin at the end of 2020 will be zeroed out because it has been fully reversed. It has been fully Taxed. This is how your deferred tax liab works. Hindi yan automatic na magiging asset. Okay? But if the reversal or by virtue of other items, magkaroon tayo ng excess dito, maging negative na to, 
from that point, that is when you will recognize deferred tax asset. Going back into the problem, ang nire-require lang naman sa atin sa number 18 is what is the deferred tax liability for 2018? And we have answered that one long before we completed this solution. And we have arrived at a deferred tax liability of 300,000 for that period. So, to answer, letter A po ang sagot sa number 18. Deferred tax liab for 2018. And if we are talking about 2019, 2020, 2021, ang tanong lang naman dito is income tax expense for the three different years. So we might as well use Excel to compute income tax expense for the three years. Your income tax expense is simply multiplying accounting income or earnings before tax with the tax rate. For 2018, that is simply 4 million multiplied by 30%. 2019 is 5 million multiplied by 30%. And lastly, 2020 is 7 million multiplied by, yes, your tax rate of 30%. Your answers, number 19 is equal to 1 million. 200 as in our computation 1 million 500 for 2019 and 1 million ano uh, 2 million 100 for 2020 simple as that this is your first problem for Income tax accounting. So let us move on and follow this up with our next problem. We'll have this item number 23 to 26. Ang tanong po, current tax expense 2019, deferred tax asset 2020, net income for 2019, and income tax expense for 2020. It is of the same format, given na kagad yung accounting income sa kayong taxable income natin. So you don't need to worry about that. We also have the same income tax rate. And additional information, let us read the statement above. In 2019, Arlene Company received an advance rental payment of 600000 Okay, advance rental payment. Ano ibig sabihin kung merong advance rental payment? Ah... Uh, Natanggap mo na ang rent pero hindi pa siya rent income. Natanggap na ang rent pero hindi pa rent income. Meaning, it was not yet included in accounting income pero since na natanggap mo na po yung payment, under modified cash basis, that payment is already taxable. So as you can observe, yung 5 million versus 5 million 600, ang difference nila po, it pertains to the 600,000 na rent received in advance itong 600,000 na to that is a future deductible amount okay future deductible amount sir why future deductible amount uh, isa lang ang hint mo dito taxable income is greater than accounting income pero also if you would think about it Para tong, ang future deductible amount po ay parang prepaid tax. Itatax ka na ngayon, pero later on kapag naging income mo na siya, kapag naging income mo na siya, nasama sa accounting income, pero it is no longer with your taxable. As you may see, their difference is a negative 600,000 here, di ba? Because precisely, dito mo i-record yung rent income, di ba? Pero under taxation, that accrual of rent income is no longer included. So kumbaga, ang 600,000 na income ko dito, na prepaid ko na siya in 2019. 
it is termed as future deductible amount because it will be included in your income but it is not subject to tax anymore. The 600,000, I mean, in 2020. Kasi ulit, na prepaid mo na siya. It has already been taxed in 2019. So let's compute our current tax expense in 2019. And if you remember the formulas that I gave earlier, this is simple. And it requires simple math. We simply need to multiply 5 million, our, I know, 5 million 600 since current tax expense, current tax expense, that is taxable income times tax rate, 5 million 600 multiplied by our tax rate of 30%. Answer is 1 million 680, as simple as that. Kung ganito lang ang problems na ibibigay sa'yo, meron ka na kagad bonus. Sana. I wish it were as simple as that. Now, the next question is in 2019, ano daw yung amount ng deferred tax asset? Okay, in 2019, meron ka pong future deductible amount which results to an asset, benefit. Sorry if I may be making messy writings on your handout now, ano? Let me just erase that and let me just say that in words. Future deductible amount to, 600,000, it will result to an asset benefit. Benefit in terms of expense computation is a deduction in your income tax expense. So, number 24, we answer this one by multiplying simply the 600,000 future deductible amount by the tax rate. So, 600,000, i-multiply natin by 30%, 0.3. We get the amount of 180,000. It is your answer for number 24. Ano ulit? 600K multiplied by 30%. Ang sarap ng buhay, kung ganito lang ang questioning. Pero I'll have you know that if you are not familiar with this format, if you are not familiar with how taxable an accounting income works, you might not arrive at the correct choice of answer. Malamang compute mo yung 180, pero maybe you will have second thoughts on choosing the answer. Okay, so number 25, it is asking us how much is the net income for 2019, under the income statement approach. Okay, income statement approach, guys, ang ibig lang sabihin nito is, if we are going to present the net income in the income statement, magkano ba siya? It's rather simple. In the income statement, you already have earnings before tax, EBT, of 5 million for 2019. 2019 ang tinatanong, di ba? So, meron ka ng 5 million na EBT. Ano na lang kailangan mo i-deduct dyan? you need to deduct income tax expense. EBT minus ITE will be net income na. That makes sense? I think so. Now, question. How do we compute income tax expense? Let's go back to the formulas that we had earlier. Your income tax expense is simply computed as Earnings before tax multiplied by tax rate of 30%. So if we are going to compute net income, that is simply minus 30%. In other words, your EBT could be assigned a ratio of 100%. Your ITE is the 30% tax. And then your net income is 70% of that. So if I would use a shortcut to compute my net income, that would be earnings before tax of 5 million multiplied by 0.7 or the amount of earnings before tax net of tax 
if that makes sense. So 0.7 times 5 million, I get 3,500,000, the amount to be presented in my income statement as net income. This problem is rather simplistic and it would be what we could call sayang kung hindi mo makuha ang tamang sagot. Sayang naman. How many points na to? That is 23, 24, 25, 26. That is already 4 points. To which the answer to number 26 is also a very simple undertaking because it's asking us what amount of income tax expense is for 2020. And that is 7 million, the accounting income for 2020, multiplied by the tax rate of 30%. So 7 million times 0.3, 2 million 100. Utang na loob, wag kang magkamali dito. Wag na wag mong sasayangin. Okay? And that's it for items number 23 to 26. Okay, now we have another problem. Let us uh, elevate the difficulty a little bit. Ano? We have item 27 to 30. It's about Julius Company. Ito po yung mga requirements ng problem natin. So we have, how much is the taxable income for 2020? Okay. For the first time, we're going to compute taxable income. Hindi siya given. Much like in our previous two problems na binigay na kagad yung taxable income. Actually guys, pag bigay na yung taxable income, parang bigay na rin yung problem. Okay? Because you don't have to identify anymore the fitale and fidaab na aspect. Na if I would say it is the most difficult uh, part of your accounting for income taxes. 27 is asking for taxable income, 28 current tax expense, and 29 is deferred tax asset, and then 30 is deferred tax liab. So we will need to identify future taxable amount so that we could get deferred tax liab and future deductible amount so that we could get deferred tax asset. We also need to compute your taxable income for this, which is why we should first Go and examine the problem, number 27. All of this data uh, is about December 31, 2020, reporting uh, period for Julius Company. And I made it a point to just copy all of that into Excel so that we could be better in terms of mobility. Mas mabilis po mag-compute ng problem pag nasa Excel tayo. Which is why, minabuti ko na po na ilagay dito lahat ng information. So let us proceed with this one. Taxable income. Your taxable income, of course, will start from accounting income per book. Ano to? This is your earnings before tax. We have non-deductible expense. This is a permanent difference. And when you say non-deductible expense, ito po ang mga expense na nasama mo sa accounting income pero hindi dapat na-deduct. So ang gagawin mo po dito is add back. Permanent that is added. Non-taxable revenue. Ito ang mga items of income na nasama mo sa earnings before tax pero it is not actually taxable. That is also a permanent difference Pero it is the opposite of the first one. Income na sama sa accounting, pero hindi dapat maisama sa taxable. Which is why I am going to assign a minus sign here to indicate that this is a deduction. Take note, our goal is computing taxable income. So focus muna tayo dito. Magkano po si taxable income? Next, you have doubtful accounts. Okay, here is where the problem starts. Doubtful accounts. Ano po yung doubtful accounts na yan? Your doubtful accounts is a future deductible amount. Bakit po? Um, ang doubtful accounts, dinideduct natin siya in arriving at accounting income, di ba? Pero I'll have you know, 
in taxation, in arriving at your taxable income. Doubtful accounts are not estimated in taxation. But rather, ang sinasama po sa taxation is write-off of accounts receivable. So, ang magiging result po neto is because you you set up an allowance na 200,000. You made a provision of 200,000 without consideration if whether na write-off na bato, it will result to your financial income being less than your taxable income. Kasi nag-deduct ka ng expense of financial whereas in taxable income, hindi naman yan dinideduct. Okay? Your doubtful accounts will be a future deductible amount. As such, itong expense na to, ia-add back po natin yan so that we can arrive at the taxable income. I-add back mo kasi hindi naman yan dapat na-deduct. Now, estimated warranty cost. Let me minimize this one. Ha, basahin muna natin para maintindihan. Estimated warranty cost that has been recognized as expense in 2020 when the product sale were made but is deductible for tax purposes when paid. Okay. Uh, Nag-estimate ka ng warranty expense. Estimated warranty expense to. It's a provision. Pero... It will be deductible for tax purposes when paid because taxation will care on the actual cash expenditure rather than the accrual of the expense. Na deduct mo in arriving at accounting income, pero if we are talking about taxable income, a provision is not deducted. So let me just trim this down and let me unwrap para masimplify natin yung spacing. You have estimated warranty cost of 400,000 that will result to the same effect as your doubtful accounts. It is a future deductible amount. And let me just gather these amounts under column F because later on itatanong sa atin magkano yung deferred tax asset. Okay? Depreciation. Accounting depreciation is 600,000. Pero yung tax depreciation natin is 800,000. Accounting depreciation, tax depreciation, sir, it doesn't make sense. Hindi ko magets. Ano ibig sabihin? Ba't nilagay yan dyan? Well, this is, this is done so that you can compare the excess depreciation. Oh, sige ha, to explain this. When we computed accounting income, ang dinidak natin na amount is 600,000 for depreciation. Pero the problem gave us tax depreciation. Ano ibig sabihin ng tax depreciation? If we are going to account for the asset based on the tax loss, dapat daw ang depreciation expenses 800,000. So meron tayo tinatawag na excess tax depreciation. What is excess tax depreciation? Yung sobra ng tax depreciation over accounting depreciation. 600 pa lang ang nadeduct mo dito. Magkano pa yung kulang? Magkano pa yung excess na dapat pa nating i-deduct? Your excess tax depreciation is equal to this one. 200,000. It should be deducted if we are going to compute taxable income kasi kulang pa ang nadeduct natin. So let me just go ahead and paste its values so that we can remove the two of these columns because they have already served the purpose for us to be able to compute excess tax depreciation na 200,000. Ano to ulit? Lagay lang natin dito as a note. This is 600,000 minus 800,000 excess tax depreciation so we go to the last item ah wait wait sir yung excess tax depreciation ano yan is that a future taxable amount or is that a future deductible amount 
it is a, a temporary difference, much like the ones that we had in doubtful accounts and estimated warranty. It's a temporary difference, yes. Pero this time around, it is no longer future deductible, but rather it is a future taxable amount. Because it will result to our financial income being greater than taxable income. Magdededact ka ng 200,000. This deduction will cause your taxable income to be lower than financial income. So itong excess tax depreciation po, i-carry forward ko lang dito sa fitali na column for later uh, problem solving. I I'm just making this for reservation in future requirements. Last item, gross income on installment sales. Gross income on installment sales included in accounting income but taxable only in 2021. So, ano to? Nasama ko daw sa financial income pero if we are talking about taxation, hindi dapat siya kasama sa taxable income. It is of the same nature as your excess tax depreciation. It will have the result of financial income being greater than taxable income it is a future taxable amount. So let me trim this down. Gross income on installment sales. Pag nabasa mo yung gross income on installment sales, guys, dapat matik na yan. Think about it as future taxable amount. I will affix a negative sign here to indicate that it is a deduction and I will carry it forward to Fitale for future computations. All in all, when we compute taxable income, we will just make a sum of this and we should have our answer equal to 6500 In our handout, 6500 is letter C. But let us first reflect on the solution. Ano? Ang mahirap sa accounting for income taxes, guys, is when you are trying to determine whether an item is permanent difference or temporary difference. And if it is temporary difference, is it future deductible or future taxable? Okay, ito po yung mahirap. But we will take them as we go through each of these requirements. So, punta na tayo sa number 28. Ano ang nire-require sa number 28? Ano daw yung current tax expense? And you know for certain na current tax expense is simply based on taxable income and the tax rate. To which is already given. 30%. So, we'll still, we'll still need to multiply 6,500,000 with that 30% para makuha po natin yung sagot which is equal to 1,950,000. That should be simple enough to be understandable. So we'll proceed to the next requirement. Deferred tax asset and deferred tax liab. Okay, let's answer this one in Excel. There is a reason why I set aside the deferred tax asset, uh, no, the future taxable amount and the future deductible amount separately in these two columns. Because when you have a future taxable amount, that will result to a deferred tax liab, liability and expense, additional expense. But if you have future deductible amount, it results to an asset benefit that results to deferred tax asset. So ang total po nito, saka ang total dito, pag i-multiply ko yung dalawang yan with 30%, the amount that I will get is equal to my deferred tax liab and deferred tax asset. Multiply ko lang po. And we have our answers. For number 29, 
deferred tax asset? Tanong. Answer. Computation. Is this one. 180,000. Deferred tax asset. Coming from doubtful accounts and estimated warranties. Deferred tax asset. Ita tax sila ngayon, pero later on, kapag masama na sila sa financial, wala na silang tax consequences because they have already been taxed. This will cause your future tax expense to be reduced. Okay? Pero as an effect, guys, during the year, it will increase your tax liability. I mean, tax expense. So, that's 180,000. Letter B. And as for deferred tax liability, ito po ang solution natin. Ito po yung sagot. Guys, do not mind the negatives and positives, ha? Pero if you are thinking about this in a debit-credit manner, just know that the credit, ano, the negative is a credit. It's It represents liability. And the positive is an asset. It represents asset. Debit to. Okay? So, 90,000 will be my answer to this. Item number 30. Okay? In the interest of time, I won't be solving each of the problems rigorously, but rather I would like to give you a little bit of a challenge. Try solving all of the problems and see if you reach the correct answers. For that, here is your answer key for all of the theory questions and problems. But then again, ha, itry mo muna, isolve siya separately before you even label the answers. And with that, I am now ending my discussion on accounting for income taxes. This has been your Sir Kevin O saying good day and thank you for watching the video.